how they're done completely clicks with experience I've had in the past. Yes, yes. Well, we are glad to have you at least. So. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have found you. Thank you so much for being so welcoming. Of course. <laughs> So um, before we start, of course, I will uh, ask you to please have your foot socks ready if you haven't done so. We still have like five minutes, so you can prepare your foot socks while others are joining. And I will be glad to interact with some of you more. Um, so I can see some new names here. Some of our I've known like, OK, they are they have been with us for a while. Um, so Jenny, how are you, Jenny? I'm doing good, just <laughs> grabbing my foot soak. Huh, sorry? Um, I'm doing good, I'm just grabbing my foot soak. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, I will, I will, yeah, let you do that. We can talk, of course, after uh, today's meditation, we will have a very small Q&A uh, for everyone so that we can discuss a little bit more, get to know each other a bit more. Yes, and learn from each other. So uh, I can see Jenna. Hi, Jenna. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing well today. How are you doing? I'm doing good as well. And where are you joining from? Uh, from Canada. Okay, okay, wow. Nice to see you here because at least uh, until now I have not met anyone from Canada in this side room. Uh, at least I've not interacted, but it, it is nice to see you. And um, so is it your first time in the side room or like you have been no. here? Uh, this is, I believe this is my fourth time in the okay. side room. Okay. Third okay. or fourth. Okay. Yeah. And how has been uh, like Sahaja Yoga until now for you and yeah, if you could share um, something. Yeah, um, well, um, I have been uh, really enjoying it. Um, you know, it's something I look forward to every Sunday now. Um, I do, I wake up every morning and I, I do some meditation. I've incorporated the um, the balancing of the right and the left into my, um, you know, regular practice um, now. And then I do this the foot soak on Sunday. So it's, it's, um, it's really just fit into my, it's really helped me, um, to expand, um, my, my practice and Great. to grow, to grow spiritually. So, and that's what I, that's what I want. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Nice to hear. Nice to hear that. Uh, there is someone in the chat as well. Uh, this is my first time. Okay. Okay. Someone from Toronto. Um, so, okay. At least for Curtis. Hello, Curtis. Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice to hear from you. Um, so this is your first time in the side room, is it? Um, well, I've done side rooms before, but this is my first time actually, I'm actually here with my foot soak ready. And okay. I'm gonna... okay, 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 okay. So at least you know what, what is foot soak, so. Yes. Okay, okay, that's good to hear. And uh, how has it been for you until now? If you could share your experience or anything, any question, anything you like. Uh, no, really good. I've been practicing for a few months now. Um, uh, a lot of yoga, a lot of uh, kundalini uh, work as well. So um, I'm just expanding my practice now with the incorporating the foot soak. Okay. Okay. Nice to hear. Hello, Vivek. Okay, so uh, we have a message from Daisy. So, okay. Hi, Daisy. If you could speak with us a little bit. Hi. Hi. How are you? 
<laughs> I'm doing good. Yeah, this is my um my third time. I, last time I was in the second time room, so um I think this time I'm in the third one. So I didn't know about the foot soak. I have not done that before, so I'm not prepared for that this time. Okay. Okay. But okay. I can, yeah. I've been yes. doing this for like now maybe um two weeks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh food soak is something that yeah, like you're not used to or you're not prepared at least for the moment. But do you know what is food soak or do you want me to explain a little bit to you? Uh or anyone to explain it, that'll be great. Okay, okay. So we will explain a little bit about food soak until the time we we have like couple of minutes so if anyone is new here and are not familiar with foot soap meditation I can explain a little bit and uh, this is something that we do in the side room every Sunday so um, of course you uh, Rahul Bayer, you can correct me if foot soak is also done in other uh, sessions um, but at least on Sundays we do it like every Sunday so uh, as you can see in the picture uh, we have a bucket of water and then we have salt and then we have a small uh, like mug of water that we keep aside. But uh, what we do is that we put uh, water until our ankle level or little above the ankle level. Um, and then we put salt. So first uh, we put like the water and then salt in it and then we vibrate with our hands. Uh, the foot soak water. Um, so what it does is that it enlightens the elements, uh, so water element and the earth element, which is the salt. And these two elements help our left and right channel. So left channel, salt helps us, and uh, the right channel, water helps us. So all the heat or uh, that is accumulated in our right channel, uh, the water absorbs that heat and balances our right channel. And the salt takes away all the imbalances from the left channel. So that's why we use this. And also um, our, uh, like Swadhisthana helps, uh, gets helped a lot. Again, salt and water helps the Swadhisthana chakra. Uh, I'm saying this because we have this theme today of Swadhisthana. So uh, it's nice to also say that it helps our Swadhisthana chakra. And uh, Muladhara Chakra, which is below the Swadhisthana Chakra, the root chakra, the salt helps that because of the earth element. And then the void around our stomach area is also helped by this. It's basically because of the elements and the elements are represented in the first three chakras in our subtle system. And of course, the left and the right channel. So this uh, balances our subtle system uh, very uh, effectively and very fast. That's what I have observed. Like when I was starting uh, foot soak, um, like very like long back, um, I the first thing I felt was that the uh, the meditation got deepened uh, very quickly after doing foot soak every night. So uh, before going to sleep, we I used to do foot soak and then. I, I got a very nice sleep and also the other morning I had a deeper meditation in the morning so it really helped me and that's why I do it every night and um, also uh, whenever you do foot soak uh, you throw away the water in the toilet nowhere else uh, not in the tub uh, not in the ground or anywhere but in the toilet because it has all the imbalances uh, in uh, from your subtle system so we don't want anyone to get affected by it or you be, get affected by it again. So uh, we put it in the toilet and flush it. Um, yes, so that is uh, very shortly what is foot soap meditation. And if you have any questions, of course, we can. Uh, you can put it in the chat. We can take it later in the last uh, bits of the session. Thank you for explaining that so well. Thank you. Uh, hello, Samir. All right. So um, we are now uh, on time. 
with our meditation. So um, how to raise Kundalini and take a Bandhan? Uh, are you familiar with this or not? Anyone who can raise their hand? Or is it clear to you? Of course, if it, if not, then I can. Okay, at least some one person, Jenna, has raised their hand. Okay. And Daisy. All right, great. Um, so, okay. <laughs> All right, I will uh, briefly tell about how to raise Kundalini and take abandon. So, first of all, uh, this is something that we do in the beginning of meditation. And also now when we start meditating, we will raise our Kundalini and take a bandha. So what that means is that we use our hands uh, because the attention follows the hands. So we use these hands to raise our Kundalini energy, our motherly energy within us, and take her through all the chakras and all the channels within us and put her here. So bind her here. So what we do is that I can represent here. So the left hand will stay like this in the lower abdomen and the right hand goes around it. So this is a gesture that we do. So we, when we raise the Kundalini and the Kundalini is uh, above our Muladhara Chakra and little below our Swadhisthana Chakra. So it's in the very near where our lower abdomen is. So we start from there. So we raise our Kundalini like this through all the seven centers. And we tie a knot here, like this, and our hands come back. So we put um, Kundalini here, tie her here above our mind or our attention should be here. So that's why we tie a knot here. So we repeat this another time. for the second channel. So the first one was for the first channel, the left channel, and the second one is for the right channel. So we tie two knots here when we do it the second time. And then hands come back. And finally, the third time, we raise the Kundalini again through all the seven centers. And the third time, you tie three knots. So we have raised the Kundalini through all the seven centers or chakras and three times for all three channels. And then we do a bandhan. Bandhan is a protection of a mother, mother Kundalini. So we, our left hand is like this on our lap and the right hand goes above the left hand like this. And then on top of your head, where the grace is following of the divine because now we have got our self-realization. So the right hand falls to the right side and then back again from top of the head to the left side of our body. So this is one cycle or one bandhan. So we do six more. So seven in total. Three. Four. Five, six, and finally seven. So we ask Mother Kundalini in a way that please protect our subtle system and seven times because we have seven chakras. So this is what it is, uh, raising our Kundalini and doing a bandhan. You can do it before, uh, I mean, we do it before uh, when we start meditating and then after we have done our meditation. And one more thing I do is that whenever I go out, I do this again so that all my uh, chakras or subtle system is protected whenever I go out. So I also do it at that time. Okay, so now we can start. I'm sure now we are ready with our foot soaks. So, hope you can see me. Now, we raise our Kundalini together and take a Pandhan. So, again, from lower abdomen.
tying the first knot. Hands are coming back. Then raising the Kundalini again through all the seven centers. And the second knot. Then third time. Three knots and hands are coming back. Then we do bandhan. Right hand goes from the left side of our body. Above our head drops to the right side. Then the right hand comes back. Let me repeat this six more times. Now we vibrate our foot soap water. So our hand, right hand goes a little bit above the water and we rotate our hand clockwise. And we just pray by our heart that please take away all the negativities or the imbalances from our subtle system. And you vibrate the water. Then we put both our hand, uh, both our feet, not hands, feet in the water. And then we just sit calmly and we relax our shoulders. We relax our hands. We can relax our eyes, our face. Your body should be completely relaxed. Now we put both our hands towards Mother Earth, meaning that we put both our hands towards the floor. Palms are facing the floor. And here we ask Mother Kundalini that Mother. Please balance our Muladhara Chakra, which is the root chakra, the first chakra in our subtle system. Mother, please give us innocence. Please give us wisdom. And please make us completely humble. Please give us discretion so that we can know what is good for us and what is not good for us.
Now let's put our left hand on the lap and the right hand will stay towards Mother Earth. Now we focus our attention on the left hand. So this is how we are balancing our left channel. And this is also a gesture of saying that we surrender all our impure desires, all the unnecessary desires or unfulfilled desires. And we just want pure desire, which is to know ourselves. Mother Kundalini, please balance our left channel. Mother Kundalini, please give me right emotions. Please take away all the excessive emotions. Mother Kundalini, by your grace, I am completely peaceful. I'm completely satisfied. We can keep our right hand now on our heart. And here we remind ourselves who we are by saying who we are not. So here we say, Mother Kundalini. I am not this body. I am not this ego.
I am not the super ego. I am not this guilt. I'm not these thoughts. I am not the past. I am not the future. I am not this nationality. Mother, I am the spirit. And by your grace, I am my own master. Nothing can influence me. I am pure love, which is detached. Pure joy. And I am pure attention. I forgive myself and I forgive others. We can now put the right hand on our lap. And the left hand is raised towards the sky. And we focus our attention on the right hand. Mother Kundalini, you are the doer and you enjoy your doing. You guide us, you heal us, we do nothing. Mother Kundalini, please cool down my right channel and take away all the imbalances of the right channel into the ether.
Mother Kundalini, you take care of my well-being. I do not have to worry at all. Now I am connected to the Divine. I do not have to worry. Mother Kundalini, please make me humble as I'm not above anyone and I do not know everything. Please make me forgiving. We can put the left hand back to the lap. Now we put our attention on both our hands. And here we ask Mother Kundalini, please give me balance. If we have any thoughts, we can just watch them because we are not these thoughts. In a very relaxed way, we can just watch those thoughts and they will go away. We can now put the right hand on our throat chakra. This chakra in Sanskrit language is called Vishuddhi, Vishuddhi chakra, meaning completely pure. And here we can say, Mother Kundalini, I am an essential part of the whole. We can put the right hand back to the mind.
we can slowly raise our attention above our head on Sahasrara Chakra. Mother Kundalini, I surrender everything. Please bring me into meditative state. We can now slowly open our eyes. We can rinse our feet and we can throw away this water into the toilet and come back. I hope everyone is back. So today's uh, theme is Swadhisthana Chakra. So we can see in the subtle system chart where the chakra is. So as you can see this um, yellow chakra, which is just above the Kundalini, which says creativity in here. That's where our Swadhisthana Chakra is. And on the left side, it represents pure desire and pure knowledge. 
So the pure desire within us is the Kundalini, which gives us the pure knowledge that who we really are. So it's not something that has been told, but has been experienced within us. We have got a self-realization, which was now you can say with confidence that it has been an experience. You have felt it in your in your own being that you are more than just this body or this mind. So Mother Kundalini gives her pure knowledge to us that who we really are. And in this journey of Sahaja Yoga, we slowly, slowly realize with time who we really are more and more. So we get these experiences. So it's not something that has been just said, but also have been experienced in the meditation. And this is the beauty of Sahaja Yoga. On the right side, we have pure attention. So uh, we get this thoughtlessness whenever we meditate. Um, we feel more and more that, okay, we are much more peaceful. Our attention has settled much more than it was. So Mother Kundalini also nurtures our pure attention within us, which is there, but it gets purified or the clouds over the attention goes away slowly, slowly as we meditate. So meditation is very important for that because our connection gets stronger with the divine and also with our spirit. So the attention also gets nurtured. So this is uh, both left and right uh, aspects of Swadhisthana Chakra. In the center, we have creativity. So we can also say a self-expression, which is now the expression of the spirit, of the pure love, how you, however you want to express it. Some people start to write poetries after getting self-realization. That's how they start to express their own wisdom or their own journey of finding themselves or their experiences that they get from spirituality. Or they do singing or something that helps you to express your spirit. So in the center, you get this creativity also. So um, when the Kundalini rises, it first goes to the third chakra, which we say the Nabi chakra. And then it goes down to Swadhisthana Chakra and it goes around the void, which is the bigger green circle you can see around the piece where the Nabi Chakra is. So it goes around and nurtures the void as well. So let's uh, view um, a talk by Sri Mataji where she tells more about what is Swadhisthana Chakra and what is the journey of the Swadhisthana Chakra around the void and um, how it is expressed in our attention also. So let's go through that first. Hey, on top. Is the ego. The balloon that is yellow is the ego. You see, down below it starts from the Sadhisthana. This is the color of the bile within us. And this Sadhisthana chakra, which is for our creativity, is directly connected to that ego there. And when it starts rotating round the void and going to the various parts of the void, it collects all the problems of the void. Void is that green uh, 
circle within us, where physically we have, in the void, we have uterus, we have kidney, it's a complete viscera, all the intestines, ascending, transfers, descending colon, liver <coughs> is the upper part of liver more, then also pancreas and the spleen. So all the problems of these organs are collected by this chakra which moves, it comes out of the Nabi chakra and moves round and round and round and collects all the problems. It nourishes, gives power, the vital power to these organs and also it generates necessary power for our creative action. It also collects the fat cells of the void, convert it into the proper cells for the brain, for its use, for the grey matter. All this work it has to do, one chakra. It manifests aortic plexus outside. On the physical level, we call it as aortic plexus, and it has got six subplexuses which look after all these organs. This is meant for our action. When we go into action, this chakra starts working. By the first power, which is on the left-hand side, we desire. But by the second one, we go into action and it's called as Kriya Shakti. Now when this action starts within us, it produces the byproducts, or we can say all the problems of these organs, which are to be deposited somewhere, and they are all deposited in the brain as ego. All the problems that we have out of these this creativity and the action of all these organs are to be counterbalanced. And as a counterbalance, the ego develops. For example, now I have to come to meet you all here. I had to get out of the house, I had to change, I had to drive, whatever it is. Then I came, I had to put in effort. I had to plan out how I'm going to talk to you that I don't do normally, but I'm saying that generally people do it. And I put in the effort to come in. Now how am I to justify this, all this effort? What is the satisfaction that one gets out of doing this effort, this kriya, this action? We go on doing some action, and why should we do it? After all, action means, any activity means exertion, moderation, problems. The best is to sit at home and do nothing of the kind. But we do not do that. We take up challenges, we rush up to it. All this we do with our Kriya Shakti, with our right action. Because we do action, we have to have a satisfaction about it. As a reaction to that, ego develops. If we do not have the ego, we would not do anything. It's a fact. But ego is the one 
that rationalizes all our madness, the rat race we are running into. If we did not have the ego, we would not go into this nonsense. The more we try to rationalize our activities, the more ego develops to satisfy. All right, very good, very good. Now you are a successful man, see? You are a very successful man, you have got this, you have got that. Lots of misunderstandings creep in when we pamper our ego like this. Or I should say that when we are satisfied with our ego, that we really get lost. We get identified with our ego and not with ourselves. So if you do some work very well, supposing you have, say, made a beautiful poetry, or say, not a po piece of poetry, but say, you have made a very good painting, then you would like people to appreciate. If they do not appreciate you, you think you have done nothing, though you have done a beautiful poem uh, of a canvas. But still you will be so dissatisfied with yourself, unless and until people appreciate you, they must garland you, they must say, Oh, you are great, you are really unique, you are a genius. You know many artists who created great art, got trapped into this kind of misidentification. When they created some great art, the art could not give them satisfaction. They had to go to ego, and Mr. Ego would not be satisfied unless and until everybody says, yes, yes, you are very good, you have done this, you are a genius, you are this, you are that. That's how the ego develops then within us. But a situation can arise where even when we have done nothing, we want to take the credit. Then we call such a person egoistical, who says, I will do this, I have done this, I, 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 then we call him an egoistical person. Because he gives words to his ego, that's why we call him egoistical. But all of us have got this Mr. Ego there sitting on our heads. When it starts bloating, the more successful you are, the worse it is. The more you indulge into planning and thinking, the worse it is. The balloon goes on, you see, pumped, as if you are pumping a balloon, you see. The more you pump, the more it becomes. And you can never realize that you are not that ego. Then you start feeling very nice about it, because everybody says, oh, what a great man he is. The whole society develops on those lines. Now how to overcome this ego? Because people start seeing gradually this. It happens. They start seeing Mr. Ego, oh, very great, he's just coming up, giving me ideas, all right. You feel sometimes very depressed with the idea that this is Mr. Ego I was identified with. All right, you see your ego. Then when you see your ego, then what do you do with it? Or if somebody says, better watch your ego, then what happens? You start fighting it. You say, no, I will not say anything, I'll just keep quiet. Let them say anything, whatever they like. Then you become another type. You become a person who is suffering from superego. So you are left with desires but do not act. When you say that, let others aggress me, I am not going to aggress anyone, I will be very careful about not aggression. But by this kind of a thing, what happens? That when you raise the left side, I mean left side which goes up and the right hand side, superego, it presses the ego down but again is bounced back and there is a kind of a bouncing going on. By this behavior when you fight your ego, the ego sits on your head much more. The more you try to fight ego, it sits on your head. You are not to fight it. 
Supposing you take a balloon and start hitting it, it will hit you back further. Go on hitting it, it will go on hitting. Now, which is the way to deflate this ego? How do we deflate a balloon in the same manner? Take a pin and give it a prick. You just look at yourself, say, all right, Mr. So and so, now, how do you do? And you laugh at yourself, you said, oh, you were very unhappy, you see, when you saw that you were, you were not pleased very much, all right, now have a pin from me. And that's how you deflate it, by seeing it, by all the time making fun of it yourself and piercing a pin into it. What is the thing? Any other question? How do we fight the ego? See, you should never fight it. If you try to fight it, it will sit more on you. That's not the way to fight. That there is ego and you fight your ego, oh yeah, I'm going to box you, then it will grow more, you see. The more you box it, the more it will grow. Never fight your ego. <coughs> Only way is to see it. Your attention is very important. Your attention is now enlightened. Whatever you see, it comes to its right side. <coughs> it comes to its right side, size. Say ego, if it is overgrown, you just watch your ego. Best is to watch yourself in the mirror and you say, Oh, Mr. Ego, how do you do? <laughs> then it will come down. But don't fight it, just to be seen. All kinds of egos could be there. If you are over-educated, you are egoistical. If you are uneducated, you are egoistical because you must try to show that you are something. All sorts of egos are there. So best thing is to see for yourself. That's why I say face yourself. Yourself means your spirit. <coughs> yes, very much so. For super ego also, not to be frightened, you should just say, get out. I can see you very clearly, you are there. You get out from here. How dare you frighten me? I am the spirit. I am the Spirit. How dare you can do that? That's how. You see, ego makes you idiotic, absolutely. Ego makes you idiotic, makes an idiot out of you, absolutely. And the superego makes you a coward. It makes you a coward. Now how to fight it? I'm not going to be an idiot if you say that. Ego will go away. If you want to be an e idiot, then he'll be there to help you. If you want to be an idiot, all right, call Mr. Ego. He'll become an idiot. Straight forward. <laughs> the easiest way, easiest way, if you want to become an idiot, e simple thing is to call the ego. Thank you for sharing the videos. So um, we can now close our eyes and we can meditate just in silence uh, for a few minutes and we can use some affirmations for Swadhisthana Chakra. So we can close our eyes. We can put the left hand on our lap and the right hand on the left side of our Swadhisthana. So left side, lower abdomen.
and we can put our attention there. And we can just say a simple prayer to Mother Kundalini. That Mother, please give me pure knowledge and pure desire. Mother Kundalini, by your grace, I am the Spirit. And I do not have to fear anything. By your grace, I do not have to have any diffidence about myself. Please let me have full faith in my true self, which is the spirit. We can now put the right hand on our lap and now we can put the left hand on the right side of our lower abdomen where the right swadhisthana is. Mother Kundalini, I am not the doer. Mother, you are the doer and you love doing for us. You enjoy doing for us. Mother, please purify our attention.
Mother, please give us strength in our attention so that our attention goes more and more inside and more and more on our spirit, which is in the left heart. Mother, please make us more one with the Spirit so that we can watch or witness ego and superego and witness everything. We can now keep the left hand on our lap. And let's keep the right hand in the center of our lower abdomen, which is the center Swadhisthana Chakra. And here we can ask Mother Kundalini, please give us creativity. Please give us pure love. Please give us detachment. We can meditate just for a few minutes with some music.
are not enough programmers. We can raise our Kundalini and take a bandhan. So we can raise now our Kundalini and take a bandhan. Thank you everyone for joining and we can have a small um, affirmation or like a thank you to our mother Kundalini and also to Sri Mataji who has given us our self-realization and let um, our pure desire come true and please fill our life with peace, joy and love and may everyone be blessed with their kundalini realization or kundalini rising above. So thank you everyone. And I'm still here for a few minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, um, we can also chat a little bit if you have time. Thank you, Ila.
it was just beautiful. Thank you, Rahul. God bless everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mati. It's always nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you. How are you? Thank you. Good, very good, very, this is wonderful. This is so profound, very deep and very meaningful. I felt the energy really, really working this time. It was, it was just amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was so in-depth. I so enjoyed it. It brings so much joy. Thank you. Have Thank a great you. Day. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy. I also felt the same way, like everyone yeah. else. It was mm -hmm. really nice. And was, thank you. I would say like serene. I don't know how to describe it. It was so perfect. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, Jenna. Have a good day. Bye. bye bye. I I, I appreciate see. the um focus <clears throat> you that seems to repeat in these sessions on humility because that is that's like a constant theme in my life and and the idea of how many ways popular culture um tempts us constantly to fetishize and ritualize those things that build ego. <laughs> that, <laughs> that that make us weaker um so yeah i i always end up with a permanent smile on my face during these sessions as i follow what you're saying i really appreciate it thank you pati for uh saying this because it has been also for me um that's why i always try to um ask for this for my own self from mother kundalini or you can say from the divine, because that also helps me because, uh, like you said, it's so easy, you know, to uh, get this ego and um, also the environment also affects us so much. So, yeah, it, it's nice yeah, to ask this. Yeah. Yeah. There's such a, a um, so much of, of life, especially in this country, is devoted to seducing us into one <laughs> pursuit or another. Yes, and I I just find that that sort of energy so challenging, shall we say? I don't like to use the word negative, but challenging. And so mm -hmm. I don't know. Some time ago, I, I sort of started this thing where I call it the humility bottom line rule, and it's every time I think I'm humble enough, it means it's time to look for another step down. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good thought. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> just love the way you guys do this i i don't know i haven't been doing it long enough to know whether um all of you repeat this theme but it does seem <laughs> to have been a, a repetitive one in the weeks that i've been coming so i really appreciate um it it just helps me to get to really release into the process i feel very comfortable with your process thank you thank you so much and Yes, I, I, we all have with time, especially in Sahaja Yoga, realized that this is so important. So I, I guess maybe that's why everyone is like, you know, trying to pray for this uh, so that it helps our our right channel, especially. Um, and also, I don't know, it ha happens so spontaneously. Like, uh, I usually don't prepare uh, anything, like especially today, uh, and Rahul Bhaiya would know this, uh, but today even the speech was not prepared, so it was so spontaneous. So it's just how divine works, I feel, and how collective consciousness works because uh, even the speeches were not like it just happened that it came, uh, like um, you know, while I was watching, and then Sri Mataji's videos came through and. It's so nice that how it works so spontaneously, which makes you even more humble that, okay, this is not, you're not doing anything. So. I understand exactly what you mean. And I yeah. want to enforce your sensibility because that came through. It comes through that it's very genuine. 
It's very, um, it, it's not um, designed or planned uh, to try to achieve something. It's yeah. just welcoming someone into your space. Yes. Your, your sensibility. And that is the definition of sharing, right? Yes, yes, you are, you are right about this, yes. Just, uh, that's that's why you even want to pray more for this, you know, because it's so, it's so joyous that you don't want to lose it and you're like please make me humble and exactly because at one point I had that thought is like oh yeah I should try doing this more often because it's so hard to save this all the way through each of the days of the week <laughs> yeah. yes yes you have to and, really yeah. put the yeah. effort into not being seduced by all that <laughs> ritualization and fetishization that that is yeah. happening all around us all the time Yes, yes. Just watching it helps so much. Like, uh, like Sri Mataji said that. Uh, just um, of course you don't have to watch anything, uh, like externally, but also watching how your mind is diverting, uh, is a very, very, very profound advice from her. That you know, well, I, one thing I find is that um, instead, I mean, when I would be in a group, say, and um. Mm -hmm you know, somebody would put forth an idea that to me is just like mm -hmm. jarring and it's like, um, mm -hmm. it, it's mismatch, it, it's lack of connection mm -hmm. to the actual mm -hmm. energy of the universe, but yeah. it's presented as a very firm this mm -hmm. or that. And <laughs> that's, ex I mean, I'm able to, when I'm being conscious, I'm able to say, oh, yeah, okay, you don't yeah. realize that you're that that's about you and not about us. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, it, then you can feel compassion for the person as opposed mm -hmm. to getting, as my grandmother would have said, getting your dander up. over yeah, because it, it, it is easy if you're not like focused yeah. on your own humility. It's easy to overreact to everybody else's like um, yeah. energy errors, shall we say? Is that a nice way to put it? Mm -hmm. Energy errors. I like that because you're, you're not engaging. Each of your chakras or some of your chakras aren't necessarily lined up with the universal energy. Yes, yes. Yes, that's why whenever I go out, I just raise my kundalini and take a bandhan because then I'm like, okay. I surrender. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Well, I really, I, I absolutely enjoy it. And this has been a particularly delightful session, I think partly because it, it seems so spontaneously genuine. Yeah. So I felt very comfortable with you and very, um, I felt in very good hands. Thank you. This was amazing. It It's all done by, yeah, I can feel it too, because the way it, it all came together, I could see that, yeah, it's amazing, wonderful <laughs> for everyone. Many, many thanks and blessings to you so much. Yeah, same to you, same to you. So and what I really... happens at the end now? Do we get put back into a different group or do we just disengage or how do we do this? I never quite uh... get how it ends. Uh, sorry for for this. Oh, I session. never. No, no, I never quite get how the sessions are supposed to end, and um, yeah. so I don't know if we get put back into the main <laughs> group or we're just supposed to leave or what. <laughs> uh, you can of course. Uh, you can continue with your day. You can leave the room because I think in the main room also the session is has ended or about to end. Okay. So uh, you can of course leave this session once you feel that okay, uh, you need to continue your day. So that's completely fine. So yeah. Well, I'm always energized after these too. So that that yes. helps. And and how do I how is your name pronounced? Ila? Yes, it's Ila, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Ila, it has really been a pleasure to spend this time with you. I so appreciate the time that you've given. Thank you. Thank you so much for your sh all the sharings that you have. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I will always remember that dandruff thing. It was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> well I'm kind of old so my grandmother think of how old she must have been <laughs> Thank she you. would have been probably the age I am now when she would be saying that and of course as kids we would have yeah, yeah right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um so I I I, I do make an effort to be relevant but <laughs>
the older you get, the more you say, ah, you know, relevant isn't all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I can be relevant to this type of a group and this type of an effort, that that's enough for me now. Yes. Well, blessings. Thank you so much. Enjoy Thank your you. day. Blessings. Thank you, you too. I can see CV and Samir has risen their hands. So maybe we start with CV. Yeah, hi. Um, I don't know if Patty's still in the room. Um, I'm an old woman too. And uh, so uh, I, um, I have had prior years of trying all different kinds of uh, meditations. And there is a similarity, which you said at the beginning of the session, I, there is a similarity that I, uh, that I too can understand what's going on with this particular form of meditation. Most of these do center around uh, awareness of chakras and the raising of the energy. This this meditation in particular, I found for uh, also, again, a, a similar reason. I resonate a lot with Patty um, in that I was like, uh, I, I have got to find a, a, a live uh, meditation group and there are none in Baltimore so uh, I went online trying to find that, and that's when I found Sahaja, and 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 I realized that well I can do this on Zoom, and that's when I joined. It's about only about two months, two and a half months now, but for today, oh, and and very very slowly, as you say, very slowly, changes seem to happen. My mind uh, uh, gets slower and slower during the day. It's easier to just sort of kick out you know any 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 uh repetitive uh thought that has absolutely no bearing on on current reality you know all of that left channel past stuff it's becoming very slowly easier to uh just ignore it or or, or just switch my mind away from it so i i get a lot out of this but um i didn't want to bring down the group but i do have a, a sort of a, a practical question where we are uh we're bringing up the energy and uh and the the statement is that uh that there is nothing to worry about well <laughs> unfortunately there is uh quite a lot to worry about uh for me currently um i'm about to have my electricity turned off and i have no way to pay the uh to pay the bill um i've got about two weeks to get the money together and i don't have it and so for me, when one says there's nothing to worry about, um, I, I just simply, I, I can't get past that. This is a real world practical, you know, uh, uh, survival thing. Uh, and I just don't know. Uh, I can't tell myself that there is nothing to worry about. So I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be expecting miracles. I don't know how you yourself would deal with something like that. That's how I mean. A good and practical question, like you said, and um, I have been in some, uh, similar situations as well, and uh, things have worked out. So, um, uh, so can I have your name? Uh, what's your full name? Oh, I'm sorry, Kathy, and uh, I don't know how to change this. I changed it in the uh, I changed the name in the meetup uh, connection, but it, it, I think I'm going to have to actually join Zoom which yeah. I didn't really want to do. I didn't want to spread myself so thin, uh, but I think I'm going to have to actually join uh, Zoom to be able to put my name up as it as Kathy. Yeah. So I, oh. I too, am Kathy V, but I'm Kathy with an I-E, C-A-T-H-I-E. Uh, mm -hmm. There's another Kathy in the room uh, that she is C-A-T-H-Y-V. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's that's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, C A T H I, and then you, uh, your, um, okay, your name has changed. Uh, and what is your uh, like second name, like surname? Vetsagard. Uh, what? Sorry. Vetsagard. It's it's Danish. Don't, it's okay. V is good. <laughs> okay. Um, there is something that we do. Uh, is that we of course put a very pure and loving attention to someone who needs it. So what we do is that we can all do it together here who are present. We write Kathy's name in our hand, like here. You can 
think of it like imaginary writing, but like Kathy. And then I just write V, okay? And we make a right uh, like a clockwise motion. You can also do it for yourself, Kathy. And we can just give vibrations and we can very um, like with a loving way, we can pray for Kathy that Mother Kundalini, please help Kathy in our situation. So this is one way to pray to divine for any situation. And then we can just rub it off. So, um, Kathy, I um, I just hope and pray that your situation gets completely like solved. Uh, you can, of course, meditate and pray for for yourself, and of course, you will be in our prayers. And if you want to be worried, I I cannot say anything for that. But let's just see what happens. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's all I can ask of this group. I I love coming to these meditations. I, I feel the energy so strongly. Um, I just feel that at this particular time, this is like real bricks and mortar, real life stuff. It's, <laughs> I mean, I just don't know if, if energy can intercede. I mean, it's, it's a matter of just being able to pay this bill. So I, I hate to bring everybody else down, but this is just... Yeah. realistic so thank you thank you so much for uh for your positive energy uh we'll see what happens i've got i've got until october 16th and then they're pulling the plug so yeah don't worry it will be okay it will be all okay i see kathy you're joining from i think june you started right i was and um, yes uh, yes we yeah, spoke yeah, before yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah glad you're here and uh you're liking it Oh yes. Uh, uh, until I got word that the plug was going to get pulled, I was I was surging forward, and having huge changes, and now I'm all I'm all knotted up with this issue. So, yeah, we can as El um, Hadi. We did um, in a good faith. We did all praise for you. Thank Things, you. And just be positive, and everything will be. Thank you. I, I don't want to say that word. All right, but yeah, it will be. Yeah. Uh, we we yeah. Ho I'll hope for it for you. Thank you so much. Okay, I'll I'll mute myself now. Uh, Samir has raised his hand, so go ahead, Samir. Hello, Jeshi Mataji. Jeshi Mataji. Uh, Hila, thank you for this beautiful meditation session. Thank you. Hope you are well. A beautiful a place we can have. Thank you. Thank you. All right. If we don't have more questions, uh, we can conclude this meeting. And have a great Sunday, everyone. And see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, love. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you. Everyone.